Good morning, church. Our uh, reading this beautiful Sabbath, uh, we found it in Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 4, 4, verses 40. As we read the Bible, it says, you shall, def you shall therefore keep his status and his commandment which I command you today, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your day in the land which the Lord your God is giving you all time. Yeah. 
God really take, takes care of us. I thought I was prepared, but this song is my song and make me cry all the time. Because I know that God is always taking care of me. He's always seeing how to make my path as easy as possible. On May 2 of this year, it was a regular day. The previous day I had been working in my garden and the whole day I was under the sun, I said, I said to my wife on Monday morning, you know what, this morning I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to work in the office. I'm going to, I had to prepare some papers. I had to do some reports. I had to review some accounting. So I stayed the whole morning at the office in our home. And then at around noon, my son-in-law, Pastor Tony, called me and said, uh, Father, can you go to the school this afternoon and pick up the kids? Because I have something else that came later. And I had to... Uh, go and do some errands, and I said, okay, I can go, I can do that. So I kept on going around the house for the rest of the day, around three o'clock, I went to the school and picked up the kids, came back home with them, and they, they asked me, Grandpa, I want you to make us some food, because we know that you can cook very, very well, and I like your food. So uh, I don't want, I don't, we don't want uh, well, Grandma to do their food, we want you to do it. And I said, okay, that's good, that's good. I wanted to prepare something for you. So I did something fast for them that they like, and I served them the food, and it was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I told my wife, you know what? I usually used to go to the uh, recreational center around 5, 5.30, and spend a couple of hours every day over there. I told her that afternoon, you know, you know I'm going to go earlier today. Uh, today is 4 o'clock, 4.15, for around that time, and say, I'm going to leave right now. And so I, I packed my things and got my backpack and left for uh, the recreational center. That's all I remember for that day. The next thing that I know is that I felt like if somebody had, was pulling my heart out. It was Thursday morning. From Monday afternoon until Thursday morning, I don't know anything. Up to now, I don't even remember after I left the house. I remember telling my wife I'm leaving and saying bye to my grandkids and closing the door. But after that, I don't remember anything. I don't know even how I arrived to the recreational center, how I changed myself, how I went inside to the uh, steam room. What I know is that Somebody found me around 6.30, I don't even know the hour yet, there are some differences on that, around 6.30, I, I was fainted, somebody found, found me, I had fainted inside the steam room. I don't know what happened after, as I said, I just remember on Thursday morning when I felt that somebody was pulling my heart out, and I yelled very loudly. Thursday the whole day I was in and out from consciousness, unconsciousness, doing things that I didn't know was, was going around me. But while that time, a lot of people got involved on in that. Uh, when they found me, they didn't know what was going on. So the lifeguards in there, they were trying to do something with me. They were trying to... To, to see if I become back to life because they didn't know what happened. They didn't know how long I had been there. I don't know how that happened because usually every 10, every 15 minutes, one of the lifeguard passes by. But I don't know how, how, what happened and how long I was in there unconscious. So they couldn't do anything. They called the paramedics. The paramedics came to, to the recreational center. They couldn't do anything at all. So they took me to the hospital right here. Like we, clo we were close to the hospital too. They, talk, they took me to the hospital. They couldn't do anything in there in the hospital. So they had to get a helicopter and bring me to, to um, Kamloops, to the hospital in there. In the hospital in there, they couldn't do anything at all. So they induced coma in me. They put me in induced coma for the rest of the day. The day they didn't know what was going on. They couldn't do anything at all, nothing. 
They didn't find anything wrong with me. It, 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 they did a lot of uh, uh, blood uh, tests. They couldn't, couldn't do anything at all. They didn't know. Uh, some of you call me the miracle man, and, and I think it is really a miracle that I'm with you in here. Nobody could do anything. They didn't know what's going on with me. They didn't find anything wrong with me. First they came by, my daughters, they were in there, and you saw them in the, in the screen thinking. They were there trying to uh, see what happening and give me some strength. My wife, Pastor Tony, was there too. The whole day, I don't remember much of it. I just remember that, thank you, I remember that in the afternoon came a therapist to help me because I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't stand by myself. The whole night I couldn't sleep at all, I couldn't close my eyes, nothing, I had, the, I had, my, I had the clock just in front of my bed and I could see all the seconds, the minutes passing by, hours passing by. Friday morning came at around 5.30, I said, I, well, I, I better start singing because it's... It's another day. The day is coming out. So I grab my, my phone and, and start singing some hymnals and then reading the Bible. Then around 6 o'clock, I said, I have to stand up. I cannot be like that. So I grab one of those walkers that they left me over there and, and try to do a few steps in it. I, I did it. Thanks, God. He gave me the strength to stand up and did some, some step with the walker and, and could go up Friday morning. My family came, so people came, and the nurses do things in there. I remember a little bit of thing. My wife remember better that the nurse came and start, tried to do some stuff in there. My wife came, and, 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 and she's always trying to help. And I told her, let her alone. Let her do the job. You get out of the, the room. She's the one who knows what she's doing. You don't know what to do. Go out. Go out. Leave, leave the room. Let the nurse work. My mind was still going in and out from things, but that day passed by too. And uh, it was really hard. On Friday evening, after my family left, I grabbed again my phone and started singing and, and, and reading the Bible. And that night I said, Lord, I, I need to rest too. Even though I've been sleeping for for days, my body feel like it's weak. So I need to rest. Please let me rest tonight. The time passed by. Midnight came. One o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. And I said, I had to sleep. I had to sleep. So I closed my eyes. Usually when you close your eyes, everything comes black. But that day when I, that, that, that morning when I closed my eyes, everything came red, but red, really red. I said, what is this? Am I still unconscious of what happening? So I opened my eyes. Everything was normal. I closed my eyes again, and then the red started to break down, break down in front of me. And I, I know that... Uh, Things happen, and, 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 and what I'm going to tell you might, might think that, well, he maybe was still under the drug, but I opened my eyes again because I, I said, what's going on? Now it's, everything is coming like in pieces. So I closed my eyes the third time, and those pieces that came coming down start to make letters, but Different things that I couldn't understand, I couldn't read. And something in, in, in my mind was trying to, to understand what's coming on. Then a voice came to me and told me, pay attention, Carlos, pay attention. And that voice guided me through, through those readings. First was like Arabic, like Hebrew, like Roman, and at the end came the Spanish that I could understand properly. And he said, listen what I have to tell you. 
on that Thursday when I woke up, when my family came and asked for my phone, the first thing that I did was I called to my, called my son. He's, he's away from God right now. He's living his life. And I called him and told him, son, I'm back. He said, Daddy, I'm happy that you're back. He couldn't come because he, his, his work didn't allow him to, to leave. So he said, Daddy, you're back. Yes, I'm back. I'm back for you. God has given me a second chance to bring you back to him. When my wife and my daughters came, my elder daughter also, she's not at church, and I told her, listen, God has given me a second chance. I want you to come back to him. She said, yes, daddy. She said, yes, daddy, we're doing something to come back to him. She said, don't just think of it, do it. Because you need to be there. You need to, you need to come to Jesus. The first thing that God told me when he walked to me, he, he came and talked to me on Friday. He says, Carlos, I'm giving you a second chance. That's the first thing he told me. I'm giving you a second chance. Where is your family? Where are your kids? Don't forget that when I come, I'm going to ask you for your family, nothing else. Parents, especially daddies, you are the ones that are responsible for your family. It's not mommy. It's not my wife. It is I who is responsible for my family, for my kids. Many times we think that well, mom is at home, and so she's the one who has to take care of them and teach them what they have to do. But it's not that way. We're wrong, completely wrong on that. We, we are the priest in our homes. We are the one who have to teach our kids how to obey God, how to obey mom, how to respect one to another. And he was clear to me. Because most of the time when I wa our kids were growing up, I was really busy, not only in a war at church, I was really busy being an elder, being a pathfinder director, being uh, a deacon, being in different activities. So I was involved in everything. And I said, well, my wife had to take care of them because I'm busy doing things for God. But that's not the way it, it is. We as parents, daddies, we are responsible for our kids and for our wives. It's not the way, all the way around. That's the way that God has teach us. We are the priests in our homes. We have to take the time to be with our kids and show them. That's why we read in, in Deuteronomy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 40, You shall therefore keep his status and commandment, which I command you. Because he wants to be with us. He wants to be our leader. He wants us to be there to show the people that he has given in our hands, our kids, our wife, that the language he's giving us is forever, but we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient for him so he can do whatever he wants in our life. But that's the hard point, to give our life completely to our God. He wants us to be there. You can see me here talking. I'm shaking, really shaking, because what I have to share with you is really, really things that I, I don't know, but many of us, we got the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White, and we read and, and we think, well, it was easy for her to write and do things, but at the beginning, she didn't want to talk anything. And you know that even before her, somebody else was, was called. Somebody else had the same vision that she had, and this person didn't want to share anything. So had, God had to put him on the side and decided to use Helen Why? because she was, she was able, and she decided to do it, and, and she gave her life in Jesus' hands. It, it's, it's, a, it's not easy for me to be here this morning and tell you this too. Many of you are going to think, well, I don't know what he's talking or, or what he's saying that, but God always speak to us. He told me one thing when he was, telling, was talking to me. 
I don't have the time to tell you this because the moment that he was talking to me was from 2 a.m. in the morning until 6 o'clock in the morning that I could open my eyes. Through this time, I wanted so many times to open my eyes. I couldn't do it. I knew I was conscious. I knew that I was awake. I wasn't sleeping at all. I wanted to open my eyes so many times, but I couldn't open it while he was talking to me, showing me a lot of stuff that, believe me, it, it, I can write a book that maybe this, this thick on everything that he talked to me that night. It's not easy to, to carry that. And he told me, Carlos, I've been looking so long for people who can go and tell what I'm telling them. In these days, I use in so many dreams in people so they can go and nobody does it. It's being hard for me to find people that wants to give me his time, his talent, and go and tell the people what's going on. The time is shorter than you think. We know that we are living in the end of the times. We, we know that completely. But we are living a life like if still many years ahead to go. And he told me the time is short. Nobody really understands the time that we are living right now. You see all the destruction that, that is outside. He showed me. He showed me all the arsenals that are in the world. We don't see them. We don't really believe what it is in there. This world can be destroyed so many times with all the arsenal that there is in this world. Some, some, some people that have a knowledge or an idea of what it is, they say maybe this world can, can be destroyed 35 times with the arsenal that, that, that they have around the world. But it's much more than that. The, the, the sin of this world is so big that God wants to come right now. He wants to come right now, but he said, I cannot because there are so many in there that are still desiring to know me. And we know to go, we need, we, I need people to be willing to spread this word. While well, I was there, he told me many people are scared to go. Because they don't know what they're going to find, what they're going to confront. But he told me, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. And he always remembered this part that we all know. Psalm 24, verse 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You rode and your staff, they comfort me. I never leave you. i always with you. But it seems that every single day we forget that promise that God has given us. And we're scared even to talk to our own family about that. We're scared to go out and tell the neighbor that he is really a God that cares about us. A God that is willing to give his life and come to rescue us from where we are. He said, it won't be easy, but I will not be with, with you all the time. All you have to do is go. Go. And share what you have. He asked me, Carlos, what you have done with all that I have in you? What you have done with that? He wasn't even talking about material things. He was talking about the knowledge that he had given me about his word. What have you done with this? What have you done with that? Are you keeping it by yourself? Or are you sharing it to somebody else? Don't close your mouth. Open it. Open it to share the word that God has put in on you. But also, she told me something else. 
Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing it. We need to be together in this. We, most of the time that we are here, we always say we are a family. We are a family. Yes, we are a family. We are sisters and brothers. We are God's sons and daughters. But we have to encourage one to another to be faithful. To make sure that God is really, really taking care of us. He's ahead of us. So we can go easily. But we are afraid. That's why we have to encourage one to another. He told me, you see, churches, some of them are thousands of people coming together to praise. But in reality, they are not together. In your churches, you can see groups of people. Oh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like these people because they are the way that I think it is. Oh, no, I like these people because these people, is, they are vegetarians. Oh, no, I, I like these people because these people, they, they eat whatever they want. And we make our own groups within the church. And he said, that's one of the worst things that is happening right now in their churches. Because they don't allow them to be together. When you do some activities, a group is here, another group is here, another group. They don't really mingle one to another. How are you are calling yourself a family? Believe me, it's not easy to say it. But that's what he told me. How you call yourself your family? She showed me, he showed me. A group of people celebrating. A beautiful gathering. Maybe a thousand people gathering. Uh, playing games, talking one to another. Doing beautiful things together. Then suddenly, they stand and confront each one to another and start killing themselves. Start killing themselves until everybody was dead. Then he showed me another picture on the side. He said, look on the side, and I saw on the side, people were running, and some other were chasing them with arms, with machetes, and, and things like that, and killing to each other. And, and, and said, what do you think this people is? These people are Christians that they said are my followers. But in reality, they don't keep that in their hearts. They just open your mouth saying, but they don't really know, don't love me. Don't even love your own brother, your own sisters. Then he, to, he took me to almost the end of the time with everything but this devastated, destruction everywhere. Cities completely moved from one place to another. Uh, complete chaos. Completely cows everywhere. And he told me, do you see all, all this? People said that this is because I caused all this destruction. But let me tell you one thing, Carlos. Everything that you see in here destroyed has been done by man itself. Nothing of this has been done by me. I'm still holding the four corners of the earth. The moment that I let loose one little thing of this will be compared to what you are seeing today. Every destruction that we see around is made by man itself. Even changes in our weather. Destruction everywhere is made by man, not by God. And we call them, oh, it's because of nature, it's because of God desire to do that. No, he said, I haven't done anything of that. It's man itself who's doing all this. But you know what, he said, there's something that we need. And it's that we have to share this. As I said in the, in the beginning, as for me, said the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants and descendants, says the Lord, for this time and forevermore. We have to share 
God's love. We have to bring him to our every house that we can go to. Doesn't matter who it is. Don't be afraid. The time is short. He repeated that several times to me. It's shorter than what you think. If we don't do anything, he has, go, he, he has to do it. He is going to do it really, really soon. Changes are coming as fast as you even know. The man is working hard to destroy itself. We just passed what they call a pandemic. Another one is coming. Another one is on top of us right now. And it's going to be one after another. It's not just pandemic in, in, in illnesses, but also it's going to be uh, some other stuff. That I don't know wh how you see the future, but sure, very sure we won't even have food to eat. I don't know if you are seeing what's going on around in the world. I was viewing some, some, some news in one channel in South America and Central America. Now with this war that they said is going between Russia and, uh, and Ukraine. Well, down here in Central America and South America, there are mountains Mountains of food being rotten, rotten because there's no, they are not able to ship it. They don't want to ship it to other countries because the company that were supposed to ship, they were Russian companies or Ukrainian companies, and they are not allowed to grab anything and, and ship it somewhere, export it somewhere. Mountains of vegetable, fruit, and other stuff get, being rotten just because man doesn't want to do it. And we think that we are safe in here. Don't forget the Bible said that when we think that everything is being safe when destruction comes. But you know what the thing that he really asked me, tell me is that pray without ceasing. He said, they call me their God. But they don't even take one minute in their day life to pray with me. How long do you pray every day? They call me their God, but they don't even care if I am sick, exist or not. They call me their God, but they don't want to bend their knees. We need to pray. We need to pray moment after moment. The time that is coming in front of us is nothing easy. It's going to be hard. And if we are not ready, if we don't have time to share with our God, don't blame him after that. Because that's the first thing we do. Blame him for what has happened to us. When I woke up, after this, those days that I was unconscious, the first thing that I thought was about God. I didn't even know where I was. I didn't even know what had happened. But something in me was telling me that something strange has happened before. Because I didn't know where I was. I knew that something had happened. And I said, God, Thanks for being with me. Thanks for being here where I am. The song that our daughters sang in the screen is, is the song that always touches my heart. Because I, even though I haven't been faithful to my God, he always been there to take care of me. And I know it is with all of you too. And I'm asking you, take time to be with our God. Take time out of your busy life. In, in your busy day, take time to be with God. 
Be with him in every moment, whatever you're doing. Wherever you are. When I used to be a, I used to be a mechanic and used to work with Volvo back in Montreal some, some, some years ago. And even though I was with the mechanic, sometimes I, I grabbed the, the broom and the, and the mop and cleaned the area because I always liked things to be clean. And while I was doing that stuff, I always was singing and, and happy doing this thing. And some of them came to me and said, Carlos, what are you doing that? You are not a, the one to, to clean this floor. We pay somebody else. Say, well, it doesn't matter. I like to do this. And some of them asked me, hey, why are you always singing? I said, well, because I'm happy. I, I sing because I know that whatever I do and wherever I go, God is with me. And he's taking care of me. Uh, in here, in, in Vancouver, when we moved here, I left being a mechanic and, and started working uh, in concrete, building those skyscrapers you see in downtown. That I, I worked in many of them for, for many years, being hanging in there from 40 floors from the floor, nothing under me, just uh, the safety base and, 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 and the uh, what's it's called that, that, that you put in there, the, the harbor. Uh, and, and that's all that I had under me. And, and, but I was singing in there. You say, how come you don't, you're not afraid? I'm afraid, that's what I'm singing. <laughs> because I'm afraid. But I'm singing because I know somebody else is taking care of me. <laughs> like right now, I told you, I'm, I'm shaking inside. But I have to say this, I have to tell you this. Some of my workers, after, so, after some days, uh, I started my own business in, in concrete. And I, ha I had some workers with me, and even though I, I was the, the boss, as they say, uh, I was always working with them, beside them, and doing more, job that, more work than they used to do. And he said, uh, in Spanish, we said, don, that means seer. Don Carlos, why are you doing this? We are the ones who have to do this. Don't worry. I, I have, I'm one with you. I'm nobody. I, I'm not over you. On the contrary, I have to teach you what to do. And, and, and they always came back and said, yeah, I, we know that. Even though we, we try to, to overpass you in our work, we never, you always go ahead. And you always are ahead of us. And, and the work that you do is better than the one. They said, because... When you do something, you have to do your best, not your least. And that's the problem that we have in our days. Everybody wants to do the least instead of doing the best. And that's what we have to do with our God, the best. Because he's done the best for us. He gave his life for every one of us. So we have to always represent our God wherever we are. But the first thing is this. Pray without ceasing. That's how we're going to find the strength, the ability to do whatever we have in our hands. You remember when, when God called Moses, he asked him, what do you have in your hands? Well, what you have in your hands is what God wants to use for your own good and for his becoming the God of others around you. Pray without ceasing. Let's have time with our God. Let's have time with him every single day in our life. Many times my co-workers ask me, what are, what are you like to talk by yourself? I say, I never talk by myself. I talk with my God. I'm sharing with him what's happening, asking him what to do. I'm thanking him for he had allowed me to do, to accomplish. We have to do that every single day. I'm not a model. I'm not somebody that is perfect. No, to the contrary. Every single day I make mistakes. Every single day I sin. But I always go back and grab my 
Lord's arm and asking to give me the strength to forgive me and keep me going ahead. This, could be, this should be our motto. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept my faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. His coming. His coming soon. Sooner that we think. Because that was his promise. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. And finally, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all you. Amen. Really amazing story, mm -hmm. and we just pray that it does. I know I have a family, and I always think, well, what more can I do? You know, but obviously I have to work harder at it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, our song is our closing song is 472, a song of heaven and homeland. It sounds like we'll be going pretty soon. Please stand.
when I came back home after this experience, the first thing that I did was uh, call my family, call my kids, uh, call my uh, songs in love and gather them in a Zoom video because some of them were in the lower mainland, some of them were here. And ask them for forgiveness for what I left without being done and for being a bad example for them in so many things. But ask them to don't forget that the best example that we had is Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Once again, Lord, we want to thank you for your love, your mercy in our lives. We know that you take care of us every single day, every single moment. Lord, give us your spirit that it might guide us every day and give us the opportunity to be closer to you. The opportunity to have time to praise you, to share with you our good and bad moments, but most of the time to listen to your voice. Thanks for being with us today and this morning. And now that we are going away from this uh, place of gathering, we can remember that you are not here. You are in our hearts every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.